Ivy League students want a high paying job. Ooh. Yes, to pay off my student loans. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Welcome to the College Lead Channel, guys. I'm Kristen. I graduated from Harvard last year, and I have a special guest today, Victoria. She is a student from Yale, and we are going to do a fun collab where we answer your assumptions that you have about Ivy League students. But before we get into that, we actually just finished filming a video um, where we did a really fun Q&A on Victoria's channel. So be sure to check her channel out. I'll leave her channel in the description below. And before we get started with the game, could you introduce yourself to the audience? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Vic. Um, I am an international student, rising senior at Yale University. I'm from Singapore. Um, right now, I'm actually in Singapore because COVID. <laughs> and I do environmental studies. I have a YouTube channel that focuses on um, self-care for anyone, but especially youth and people in college. I also do a bunch of videos on international student application tips where I share my essays, my videos and things. I also talk a little bit more about my life lessons that I've learned at Yale, my life story, um, things like that, all very personal, but feel free to check it out if you're interested. Okay, cool. So I'm going to be occasionally looking at my phone because this is where we have screenshotted a few mm -hmm. assumptions for us to answer. And this is a mixture of questions from Vic's channel, but then also from like my students as well. So let's hop to it and see what we can answer. So here's the first assumption. Um, get up before seven, never spend hours on the bed watching random YouTube videos. <laughs> Or not true. How? What do you um, think of this assumption? Very not true. <laughs> Extremely false. <laughs> I agree. I, oh my god. I don't remember the last time I got up before 7 a.m. Especially since work from home started. I'm okay. up by 8 or 9. Are you kidding me? Not 7. <laughs> I know, right? And also, I would say like so many people, when they go to college, they sleep a lot later. Um, meaning they wake up a lot later. Also, I mean, in college, you can pick whatever class times that you want. So a lot of people take classes in the afternoon and wake up at like 11. <laughs> um, obviously, though, there are people like me. I genuinely like waking up early. So sometimes I go through phases. Like there was a period of time at Yale where I was waking up at like 5.30. Like that was back in the day. Back in the day. But like now, no more. Like now I wake up between like 6.30 to 8, which is like a big range. Um, so yeah, but it really depends on your individual preferences and also i would say the latter part of that is very untrue like 100 oh, percent <laughs> it's so unhealthy like, i'm literally tempted to like delete the youtube app off my phone like <laughs> don't delete it it brings so much joy oh my gosh <laughs> I okay, love watching question. so many YouTube videos. <laughs> I watch like a ton of cat videos, a bunch of dog videos, oh my God. random vlogs, news. Um, so suck you in, it's terrible. I also spend time on Netflix, so hey, we have fun too. <laughs> <laughs> We're normal okay. people. Next assumption. The next one, I'm trying to pick the juicy ones here. So the next one is, you care very much about prestige. Ooh, why don't you go first? Huh, it's interesting. I would say yes and no. The reason why I chose Harvard is not because of prestige, but because of the resources it has. Yeah. That being said, I do appreciate the Harvard name and how it does have a lot of prestige because that's enabled me to um, find the job that I want to more easily. That being said, there's still going to be other opportunities that you'll have from other schools, regardless if it's Ivy League or not. So a mixture of yes and no. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I would agree. I went to Yale primarily because of the environmental studies major and the graduate school of environment. So I definitely did not pick Yale just for the brand name. I didn't even think I was going to apply to the US until like the senior year, like when I was in my final year of high school. But yeah, I would say like when people ask me which school I go to, I usually say like I go to a school in the US because I don't want people to know that I go to Yale because people make assumptions about you, like how intelligent you are and all that. But I definitely do agree with Kristen that it, I mean, it's an advantage, right? To have people hear the Yale name and assume good things about you um, rather than bad things. So even though I try not to like tell people that I go to Yale, like I, I still like benefit from it. So in that sense, it's true. And also, I do know a lot of people who 
primarily decided to apply to Yale um, because of the brand name. So, I mean, I mean, not because, but like one of the big reasons was that. So I would say yes and no. It depends on the person. Yeah, I also feel like we probably wouldn't have heard about the schools Harvard and Yale, if not for that element of prestige, because people have spread the word around it yeah, too. 100%. Um, I also think it's funny how you say that you go to a school in the US, because when I got into Harvard and committed, if people ask me, I would say, I go to a small school in Boston. And obviously that would just lead to more questions, just make the situation worse. So if no one asks me what school I went to, I just won't say it. But if someone asked me, then now I force myself to say, ah, yeah, yeah I graduated from Harvard. And yeah. if they have a reaction, whether it's negative or positive, it's not my business. Yeah. <laughs> it just yeah. is what it is. This is a school I went to. I learned a lot here, yeah. made a lot of mistakes here, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People just put their own assumptions on what the school is or what it means. Yeah, exactly. It's not my problem to deal with that. <laughs> it is what it is. Okay. So here is a, another one. Ivy League students want a high paying job. Ooh. <laughs> yes, to pay off my student loans. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like from personal experience, no. Because I mean, I'm okay. First of all, let me just say I'm an environmental studies major, so it's not like I have any intention of going into investment banking or um, or consulting. And so, like the like the internships, for example, that I've resonated with, are very much like with a small nonprofit or in government, right? So they're all very they don't pay like exorbitant amounts of money. Um, in fact, I would say they don't pay very much at all. And so, for like personal experience, and also from what I foresee myself going to in the future, I don't see myself earning like tons and tons of money, like at least compared to like someone who goes into like a private company or goes into like computer science, goes into Google, Facebook, those kinds of things. Um, I would say though that there are people who do care about those things a lot more, um, like just for practical reasons, right? Like you need to have food on the table um, and also you need to pay off your student loans. Like that's a real, that's a real struggle. Um, I am very lucky because I don't have, uh, I didn't take out student loans, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, definitely I think passion is really important. Like loving what you do is important. Of course, money is important as well. So like, I think there's always a fine balance to be struck, right? Um, yeah. So this person says, hmm, I know this isn't true, but super good at all subjects, well-rounded. Mm. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was good at everything. <laughs> 100%. Mm, I would say interesting because like, I think in college though, like you have the option, like, I'm definitely not a STEM person. Like, I'm, I, I hate math, I hate stats, I hate CS. Um, but the thing is that I feel like before college, I kind of had to do as well as I could in all the subjects, you know? Like even, I, it's so funny because when I think back to my high school years, I was doing, I was like really STEM heavy and now I don't do any STEM. But I did quite well in high school. So I feel like you need to do relatively well to show like schools that you are academically like capable. Um, but in terms of actual aptitude, I would say not true. <laughs> I, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, attention goes where energy flows, right? So if you're, if you're genuinely interested in that thing, you will put in more effort into it and do better, uh, which is why like now I'm not a STEM person because I'm not interested in it. But in the past, I had to be. Yeah. What would you say mm -hmm. to that? Yeah. I think I'll also just add someone else's assumption, which is hella smart. So <laughs> that kind of covers this and the other yeah. one. Um, I would say no, it depends on how you define someone who is smart. If it means they read something once and they remember it, I'm not smart. I think yeah. the one of the reasons why I was able to get into Harvard and other good colleges is not because I'm just naturally smart, is because I realized, hey, this is actually one of my worst subjects. This means I need yeah. to spend 4x more yeah. time than some of my peers who are good at this to okay. catch up and make the same sort of grade or test score. So in high school, we all had to sort of be good at all classes that we take and be sort of generalists there. In college, you'll have the opportunity to specialize more in something you're interested in. I'm kind of the opposite of you, Vic. I hate writing. <laughs> <laughs> hate writing. I'm not someone who likes reading. Um, I like reading scientific papers. Don't, mm. I, not, not the other kind of writing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I didn't have a choice. I had to take AP English. Well, I didn't have to. I took AP English in 
high school, it was one of my least favorite uh, subjects, also AP history. Not my favorite, AP <laughs> bio, loved it. Um, <laughs> So again, it's, it's for me, I think it was just building up discipline and forcing myself to just yeah. put in the time and recognizing that, hey, I'm not good at this. And rather than just hiding it under a table or under a desk, mm -hmm. I pulled it up and just had to say, okay, Kristen, you suck at this. So we're going to learn this today. <laughs> yeah. So right? I think it's that aspect. I don't know if that means we're hella smart or we're just crazily driven or yeah, it's just hard working, yeah, something like that. Honestly, yeah. I think to everyone watching, like intelligence, talent, whatever you want to call it, is way overrated. Like the people who win in life are the people who show up every day, even through all of the difficult parts. All yeah, it's really you should read a book called Grit. Um, it's it's a book that basically documents how perseverance is the key to everything. Um, I really recommend it for everyone listening to this, uh, especially if you're a high school student who's struggling through like being hardworking. Yeah, it will help you throughout life, no matter at what stage you are in. So, yeah, talent, intelligence, way overrated. I can tell you, a lot of people just work damn hard. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Everyday. Yeah. A kind of good analogy is let's say like if you reach this level then you've mastered a skill assuming you can master a skill but what talent does if it exists it just gives you a boost and that's it and sort of you have to fill in the rest with your hard work and the effort that you put into it at some point if someone has talent they'll always naturally be good than you or better than you if you are like within this level right but at some point if you continue to persistently work and the other person doesn't you're going to be better than them not necessarily that you should compare yourself to other people, but don't let the fact that other people might naturally absorb material faster be something that discourages you. Just yeah. focus on you, how much you're learning and how much you're improving rather than comparing yourself with everyone else. Because the starting point is different. What matters is you continue to work to fill that gap. Mm -hmm. This is kind of funny. <laughs> Always what? extraordinary. Well, I hope that I am. <laughs> No, I'm not. Oh, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just joking. I, I know, don't worry. <laughs> always extraordinary. I wish, always like, these are all things I want to be. Tell me how to be all of this. <laughs> yeah, I don't even need to comment on that. <laughs> so one assumption that I did receive from one of my subscribers is you guys are perfectionists or tend to be perfectionists. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? I'm really curious. Um, so I think it's really also a mixed bag like everything is just yes and no because I think for me personally going to college actually helped me to be less of a perfectionist <laughs> I think for me personally going to college actually helped me to let go a little bit um, of my perfectionist tendencies because I see classes now as really just a medium to learn um, I take a lot of classes that I am not in topics that I'm not familiar in at all. And so I don't feel that I can be a perfectionist because I don't know a lot about the content. So going to college, not just Ivy League per se, but um, college in general has exposed me to this entire world of knowledge that I never got exposed to before. You know, like in high school, everything is categorized into like bio and chem and English. But in college, like you can take classes on anything. And that I think is really exciting. So going back to the original assumption, I think in essays, in my homework and things, definitely it's true I put in my 100%, but that putting in 100% doesn't mean that my work is perfect. Um, in fact, I think there's no such thing as a perfect piece of work. Um, so yeah, so I would say actually, for me personally, it's helped me be less of a perfectionist. <laughs> and I definitely know a lot of people who don't take their assignments very seriously and just like, you know, like do it like the day before the deadline and just rush things i don't think that's an ivy league problem i think that's just a college thing <laughs> like time it's just a student issues. problem i'm pretty sure this yeah. happens everywhere yeah so what would you say kristen yeah i would say i was it sucks <laughs> to say this but i was definitely a perfectionist in high school and it was a very toxic mindset to have mm. when i got a b in one of my classes i thought the world was going to end. And when I thought, or when I received the rejection letter from Stanford, which I applied early action to, I also thought the world was going to end. And in, in a panic, I applied to more safeties than I needed to. So mm -hmm. these are all things that sort of stem from the perfectionist mindset. If I don't hit this goal, then I'm a failure. So if it's like, I don't get into Stanford, then I need more safeties, right? I didn't think about, oh, there's target schools and this and that. And for 
a B, if I don't get an A, then I'm dumb or I'm not smart. Mm. It's, it's not the case. I think when I got to college, I was finally forced to develop a new mindset just, just to survive because you're surrounded by so many other students who are so much smarter than you. And it was a really amazing and humbling experience where I focused gradually more so to how much am I learning? Am I learning faster or slower? What can, strategies can I implement so that I absorb material faster? I know that I'm not smart, but I know that I can learn and work hard to reach that goal. And I think that's the mindset that is much more healthier to have. And it's sort of related to the growth versus fixed mindset. I've written about it in one of my blog articles, and I know Vic talks about this too in her YouTube videos, but just focus more so not necessarily on what information you currently have right now. If you get a B in the class, focus on how much you can, what you can do differently in this next mm -hmm. semester to improve to get a better grade. You want the upward trajectory. It doesn't matter where yeah. you're starting. I think that's the key. Actually, I wanted to add to that because I feel like college did change me in the way that it changed you. But definitely before high school, I, I'm sorry, in high school, I was also very much like you. Um, and I think that's, it's very sad, but like that's the product of our schooling system. Where Honestly, we are, yeah. yeah we are, where we are categorized based on our grades, where we are praised by our teachers and, and parents, not based on our efforts, but on, on this quantitative measure of our intelligence, which I think is terrible. And in a way, going to college, no matter what school you go to, is liberating in that sense because it teaches you, um, yeah, that there's so much to learn beyond the textbook and beyond these like boxes that we are put into. Um, so yeah, I think definitely difficult for me to say to any high school student watching, stop being a perfectionist because I mean, we all, like both of us were that at one point. Um, but try to, try, try your best to remind yourself that you know, your, your worth, your value, your potential isn't tied to things like grades and everything. Uh, and there really isn't just like one path success. I mean, like, yes, you know, it is great if you get into an Ivy League, but like there are many, many pathways to like a successful life and it might not be through an Ivy League. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think those are really great words of advice. It's not necessarily assumption, but one person was just wondering, what is it like going to schools with a lot of people who have some amount of fame. Let's say, for instance, uh, Obama's daughter goes to Harvard, Nathan mm -hmm. Chen in Ivy Leagues and other people as well. Do you ever see them, interact with them? What is it like? <laughs> well, okay, personally, I've never interacted with a famous person. <laughs> so it's not even like, I mean, it's, the campus is small, but it's not that small. Like, it's pretty big. And you can literally go like a whole week without seeing anyone if you wanted to. So I would also say that like, I don't think I have like a raving social life and I never have ha like had one. So, <laughs> so it's, I'm not even close to the people in my college, which is like a big problem considering Yale is known for its residential college system. Um, but I would say I'm, I, I, this is one thing I wish I did diff a bit differently. I think a lot of my closest friends and my co closest community um, are people that I have a lot of similar interests with. So a lot of environmental people, a lot of Singaporeans, and that means that I don't get to see people a lot from different, you know, sectors of campus in a way, like who have different interests, who participate in different things. And that's particularly because I don't really resonate with my college, like the people at my college, um, which is exactly where you're supposed to go to make friends with different interests. So it's been kind of weird for me because socially, I don't think that you know, like, I've been meeting people that are like, oh my god, like, you inspire me so much, like, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, I feel like the people that I hang out, this is my fault, right? Like, I feel like I hang around people that are very, like, within my community. Um, we have similar interests, and so we, we make projects together, we work together on things. It's less of, like, meeting famous people and, like, learning from them, learning from diverse experiences, which I think is one of the most important parts of being in an Ivy League school. Uh. So if you have the potential to do that, please don't do it the way I did it. <laughs> but I feel like maybe Chris can speak more to this. <laughs> no, I mean, sometimes I'll see Leah Obama just walking down the sidewalk, but it's not like I'll just go up to her and say, hi, nice to meet you. That's just weird, right? Yeah. You, you want to respect other people's personal space. Yeah. That being said, I have been in group projects before where I'll have um, where someone's the daughter or son of the CFO or CEO of an S&P 500 company. Mm. And that's something I didn't notice until later when I added them on LinkedIn or when they added me on LinkedIn. And I would look at them and say, wow, wait, really? <laughs> <laughs> right. So it, it depends. Um, 
if I have met them, sometimes I don't even know what their background is until later or after the fact. And I think that's just key. It's just meeting other people. They're yeah. just people, right? If you happen yeah. to meet someone who has some element of fame to them or uh, is well known in another industry because of their parents or their last name, it's not going to be something at the forefront of your mind or it should not be yeah. something at the forefront of your mind when you go around um, seeing people in college. Uh, that being said, you may run into some famous people on campus. I don't know, but yeah. it depends. <laughs> yeah. I, I do That's not the I, reason why you go to an Ivy League school, just putting that out there. <laughs> That's so true. I think people kind of like tend to not only put not only put Ivy League schools on a pedestal, but put other people on a pedestal. And I think that is, can be dangerous. Um, as Kristen said, you don't go to an Ivy League school to meet famous people, but also it should not be the far, thing that's for, on the forefront of your mind. And it's really true because you know, like, if you were a famous person, you wouldn't want people like, approaching you just because of your name, right? Or of your reputation. So really just see every single person as who they are, right? Like, you know, don't go into interactions assuming that they are better than you or assuming that they are more impressive or of better character. Like, you really don't know until you interact with them. So treat every person as the same. Um, and yeah, I think it's important to have that for even interacting with people who don't go to Ivy League schools, right? Because if you treat someone better because of who you think they are, how are you going to treat someone who you think has nothing to offer you? So yeah, just just be kind to everyone. Um, yeah, that's the advice that we give. Well, thank you so much for your time, Vic. This was a very fun video to film. And guys, don't forget to check out the Q&A video we did on Vic's channel and also subscribe to her channel as well. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And let me know if you'd like me to do other collabs, um, like addressing assumptions or playing fun games in the future, because I'd be happy to put out more content like this. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.